So what is man Whitney U test or the rank sub test? We have explained this concept of non-parametric hypothesis testing, uh, man Whitney U test with the help of some relevant examples step by step. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere else, just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. So generally the hypothesis testing that we have is fall into two categories, parametric testing and non-parametric testing. So if you are studying statistics, you would have frequently come across these two terms, parametric and non-parametric testing. So what is the exact difference between these two? So parametric testing are a type of statistical test that assumes that the data being analyzed come from a population that follows a specific distribution, typically a normal distribution. For example, student t-test, z-test, ANOVA, they are all examples of parametric test. While in non-parametric test, this is also known as a distribution-free test. Since they do not follow any underlying distribution, they are more flexible and can be used with data that do not meet these assumptions. So if sample do not follow a normal distribution, a non-parametric test can be used. Further, these non-parametric tests are bifurcated into two types. One is a signed rank test. And in this, if it is signed, it is signed as plus or minus. And another is a rank sum test. If it's like ranking in plus of 1, 2, 2, 3, that we'll see after this video. The key difference here is, is the data dependency. In signed rank test is for paired data, where the rank sum test is for independent data. So one of the most widely used non-parametric tests in statistics is the man whitney u test. This is also known as a non-parametric test for assessing whether the two samples of observation come from same distribution or not. And when can we use the man whitney u test? So we can use when it follows the non-normal distribution. So this test is ideal when the data does not follow a normal distribution. It compares the rank of data rather than the raw data itself making it ideal for null normal distribution. Sample small sample size. So this test is particularly useful when the sample size is small, that is less than 30. So non-parametric tests like man whitney u test are more reliable with small sample size because they do not rely on distribution assumptions, ordinal data. So this test works on ranks rather than the raw scores, making it suitable for ordinal data. Like hot, hotter and hottest. Robustness to outliers. So the presence of outliers can skew the result of parametric tests, which are more sensitive to extreme values. But since it compares the median rank, the man with the U-test is less affected by outliers. Different variance. So this test does not assume equal variance between the two groups. It evalu evaluates whether the distribution of two independent samples differ, making it useful when the homogeneity of variance assumption is violated. Now let us look at the step-by-step -step guide how to perform the man whitney u test. The first step would be formulate the hypothesis. Second step, check all the relevant assumptions. Third step, collect and organize the data. Step 4, rank the data. Step 5, formulate or calculate the U statistics. Step 6, find the critical value or the p-value. And final step would be make decision based on the result and interpret the result. So we'll see this all these steps one by one with the help of some live examples. Let's do an example here. So there are two sections in class 7 and section A and section B and these are the grades of section A and these are the grade of section B. We put these grades in the tabular form. Now, we need to test if there is any significant difference between the scores of section A and section B. So first step would be formulate the hypothesis. So our null hypothesis H0 will be the average marks of section A is equal to average marks of section B. An alternate hypothesis would be in this case, which is opposite of null hypothesis that average marks of section A is not equal to the average marks of section B. This is our 
are null and alternate hypothesis. So step two would be, now we need to rank the data. So we'll combine all the scores from both the groups into single list. So list would look like something like this. Now we need to rank these scores from smallest to largest. And if there are two scores with same values, then we assign the average of the rank for the tied values. But in our case, there is no uh, ties. So every we'll arrange the score from 1 to 12. Smallest one being 76 that you see in the red text and the largest one being 93. So I have kept the colors as it is. So that is you can see how we are ranking from smallest to largest here. So step three would be now we need to assign the rank back to the respective groups. So section A, these were the scores and these were the ranks, respective ranks that we have given in the step two. Same for section B, these are the scores and these are the respective ranks for each of these. Now, next step would be to sum the ranks. To sum the ranks means we need to add all the ranks of each, each section. For RA, RA means, it means the rank of section A. We are summing it like 6 plus 3 plus 11 plus 8 plus 1. It comes to 29. Similarly, we do it for RB. That is the rank of B. So we'll add all the ranks like 4 plus 5 plus 10 plus 2 plus 9 plus 12 plus 7 which comes to 49. So that is how you sum the ranks in both the cases. So next step is step 5. We need to calculate the U value for both the groups. The formula is Na and B plus Na into Na plus 1 divided by 2 minus Ra. And similarly for group B, we have the same formula. Now what is Na, Nb and Ra, Rb? So Na is, is 5, which is the number of observations that you have in section A. Similarly, Nb is 7, which is the number of observations that in the section B. While Ra and Rb are the rank sum that we have just calculated in the step number 4. Now let's first calculate Ua. We'll put all the values in the formula and we get U value as 21. Similarly, we'll calculate UB. We'll put all the values that we have and we'll get UB value as 14. Step 6. Determine the Mann-Whitney U statistics. Now, this is important. Now, Mann-Whitney U statistics is basically a smaller of the UA and UB that we have recently calculated, which is like min, UA and UB. So, we have two values. UA was 21 and UB was 14. Minimum of these two is 14. Step 7 would be that now we need to calculate the formula for mean. The formula is Na Nb divided by 2. That is mu u. Well, what is Na Nb? So Na Nb is the same thing that we just number of observations in each section. We put the values in this formula and we get mean as 17.5. Step 8 would be determining the standard deviation. The formula is Na Nb into Na plus Nb plus 1 divided by 12 whole under root. Everything that we are doing here is important. Just understand the formula here. We put all the values that we have Na Nb and we get standard deviation value as 37.92 which comes to as 6.16. This is the standard deviation. So last step would be to calculate the Z values. So whatever that we have calculated right now, the mean, the standard deviation, all comes down to putting these values in this formula. Z is equal to mu minus mean divided by sigma. Where mu we have calculated in step 6, uh, mean in step 7 and standard deviation in step 8. Now we put all these values back in this formula and we get Z value as 0 0.568. That is negative of 0 0.568. The step 10 would be finding the P values or using the Z table or any statistical software. So assuming the level of significance as 95% or alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So we for a total test we have to divide alpha by 2. And Z that we just calculated in the step number 9 is coming as minus 0 0.568 which is approximately 0 0.57. Now let's look at this value in the Z table. So on the horizontal axis we'll look at first 0 0.5 and on the vertical axis, we look at the 0.07 to make it as 0.57. 
the value that we get is 7.57 and we subtract this value from 1 why we subtract it because the z table typically provides the cumulative probability from the left side up to the z score so subtracting 1 gives the probability of the area to the right side of the z score so z value of 0 0.568 or 0 0.57 correspond to p value of approximately 2.284 for a two tail test so step number 11 will be making a decision based on the p value that we have calculated Assuming the level of significance alpha is 0.05, significance p will that we have just calculated is 0.284, which is greater than the level of significance alpha. So in this case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And step 12 will be the interpretation of this result. So there is no significant difference between the scores of section A and section B based on this test, as the p-value is not less than the significance level. Hence we have seen the example of man whitney u test which is a non-parametric test so if you are watching this video on youtube don't forget to hit the subscribe button and do press that bell icon for all the notification from digital learning and if you're watching this video on instagram or facebook do follow us on all these platforms you can also look at our website for interesting articles and videos link for all these is given below in the description now is the quiz time on this topic. Read the questions very carefully and you can leave your answers in the comment section below. First question. The man whitney u test is used for Compare mean of two related samples. Compare mean of two independent samples. Compare medians of two related samples. Or compare the distribution of two independent samples. Question 2. Which of the following is an assumption of man whitney u test? Data must be normally distributed. The samples must be of equal size. The data should be ordinal or continuous. Or the data must be categorically uniform. Question 3. What is the null hypothesis in the man whitney u test? You can leave your answers in the comment section below. The first option is the two samples must have a sample median Two samples comes from the population with different distribution. Two samples have same distribution. The two samples are independent. All these you can leave your answers in the comment section below.